At 3D Filler Print, we create all different sorts of designs for all different kind of customers, like from hobbyists to any professional uh, level or functional prototypes. Anything can be covered in this, uh, and it can be created for any industry you can think of. Hi, I'm Tim from 3D Filler Print. We do lots of um, types of um, printing from SLS, which is powder printing. Um, we do desktop printing and we also do resin printing. The desktop printing is the one that has, it's grown in leaps and bounds in that you can use desktop printing in lots of areas purely because the plastic materials have changed. And that side of uh, the business, you can create just about anything that you really can think of in terms of you want to create a prototype or replacement parts. It often happens with very old and rare parts where you don't have a complete part. I often use old drawings that I can locate, even sometimes photos. For many parts that are bespoke or that you may need a very um, highly modified version of, it's very often these days the only way of doing it. If you look at previous methods, traditional methods, you have to create maybe a mold or have tooling set up and by the time that is in place, a 3D printing outlet could have produced a number of the parts already. Uh, what you guys see behind us right now is uh, different materials showcasing and 3D printed. Because we do so much uh, exhibitions in school, colleges, trying to inspire kids as well in a way. So we print all these models to show them that what it is or what can be produced. We do uh, materials like wood-based material, uh, metal-based material, flexible materials. Uh, high strength materials, nylons, which can be used into functional parts uh, and potentially can be used directly into uh, a working environment. Uh, with SLS printing, it's called selective laser sintering. It's a way of fusing nylon powder together, which gives you high strength um, parts that you could use on prototyping in many different industries. Vehicle manufacturer, it could be in the marine industry, we have materials that are flexible conductive, the plastic conductive materials. We have materials based on ESD, electric static discharge type of materials that you could use for jigs and electric component, electrical components. It's like a new tool in your toolbox. It doesn't replace all your existing tools. It is a brand new tool that can do a whole lot of other things that you previously could not do. It is becoming much more now, it is maturing into a formidable manufacturing discipline. It is extremely cost effective in the instance of low volume, high value, very complex items. 3D printing democratizes manufacturing because the barrier of entry has been lowered. You could potentially have a workable product long before a big company who goes through the traditional methods may have their first version. Small companies may use it for prototyping. Large companies may use it literally to build Formula One cars. We see Bugatti, for instance, printing a brake caliper. For the first time ever, a caliper that is massive, weighs almost nothing and is really strong. Companies of all sizes can benefit potentially from 3D printing. You don't have to be Boeing to really benefit from it. And so from anything from a concept design to a 3D functional part, basically holding in your hand, you can have it. 